All right, coming back into the definite integrals and u substitution notes, um, here are the two problems that I ask you to try on your own. And part C was fairly straightforward, so I'm not going to spend too much time going over that. But I did want to talk a little bit about uh, part D before we kind of move on and do a few more examples. The idea here with this one is to realize that when you use the integral properties to separate each of the component parts out here, that the um, integral of a difference is the difference of the integrals. And I also pulled out the rider constants in the subtraction there. That when you are doing this, there are two different U substitutions that have to happen. And so kind of notice that when I did my U substitution, the first one I did use U and kind of worked through it and made my substitutions and following that problem. Now, and this is just a uh, kind of a convention to make sure if you've already used U, if you already named your first kid U, you can't name your second kid U as well, unless you're really weird. So I went ahead and used V as my substitution for that one, just so that I could keep them completely separate and, you know, kind of have this idea of showing there's one substitution for the first um, integral that you're doing, and there's a different substitution for the second integral that I was doing. So I just wanted to kind of show that to you um, and, and kind of highlight that before we go on. All right, I do have um, like an example three here. And, and this is something that is more leaning toward like those of you going on to Calc 2 next year, um, but also to kind of pay attention to that one of the things, and I haven't really talked much about this, is that really technically when we are integrating, our integrand that we have must be integrand. In most cases, needs to be, I'm like totally can't spell here today, hold on, integrand. The integrand needs to be continuous. Um, and if it's not continuous, that presents some unique problems that you're looking at. And this is called basically an improper integral because if you'll notice here that the denominator of this rational function, 2 minus 8t squared, is equal to 0 when t squared is equal to um, plus or minus 1 half. Or when t squared equals plus equals 1 fourth, sorry, I forgot where I was in that, equals 1 fourth or t equals plus or minus one half. And so notice that within the interval that we're interested in, our interval, our low bound is negative 5 to 5, that this interval contains basically a vertical asymptote. If we were to look at the graph of this function, um, it would have a horizontal asymptote at 0. It would have vertical asymptotes at uh, plus or minus one half here and here. And in terms of looking at it, um, it's probably, you know, going to be a shape in here and without my calculator, I'm like, it's probably looking something like that there. Um, after I get above one half, say it was at one, it's going to be a negative number. So it's probably down here somewhere. Um, and same thing over here, this, if t is negative 1, it'd be negative or negative, this would be positive. I think it's up here. So something along those lines. But look at what the problem you're going to have is, if you think about the definite integral is the area under the curve, starting from uh, negative 5, which is over here, and going up to 5 over there. Do you not see that you would have kind of a problem as we're going here when this goes up to infinity here, that there's this issue of, well, what do you do with these asymptotes that are right in the middle of it? And so this is not something that we actually can do in this course. It's something you're going to look at in BC Calc or in Calc 2 um, next year. So I wanted to bring that in and just make a comment that um, to compute integrals, without using a different technique, which is called improper integrals, you need the integrand to be continuous 
on the interval. And so I just thought I would highlight that because you can very easily just, you know, plug and chug with the rules, but not realize that you're doing something completely wrong because of the fact that that integral is not continuous on the interval of interest negative five to five. Now notice that when I come down here to B on three to five, well, three to five is only the section on the graph that starts somewhere here and over three to five. And that is a clear area that I can calculate, and that does not have any issues. So this integrand is continuous on the interval 3 to 5, and we would be able to use the u substitution. So I would do u equal to 2 minus 8t squared, letting it equal the denominator. My du would be negative 16t dt. And then this negative 16 right here, and I look up here at my integrand, and I say I have a 4 instead of a negative 16. So I'm going to need a corrector. All right, so I'm going to have to add in. I don't have to add in the whole 16. I already have 4 there. So I only need to add in an additional negative 4. So I'm going to basically take this integrand, and I'm going to multiply this by negative 4 so that I get the negative 16. And I'm going to correct with negative 1 fourth so that what I have added is going to multiply to 1, negative 1 fourth times negative 4. All right. So from there, I can go ahead and start making my substitution. I have my corrector, negative 1 fourth. My definite integral, I'm going to hold the bounds for just a second. The top. The negative 4, 4t dt becomes du. Okay, so all of that turns into du. The 2 minus 8t squared becomes 1 over u. And then I need to change my bounds. So if t equals 3, then u is going to equal negative 70. And I'll leave you to do the arithmetic. If t is equal to 5, then u is going to equal negative 198. Right, so we change our bound, negative 70, negative 198. We recognize that 1 over u is the derivative, known derivative of the log function. So we're doing negative 1 fourth natural log absolute value of u evaluated from negative 70 to negative 198. And then we plug and chug, negative 1 fourth ln of 198 after I take the absolute value, minus negative 1 fourth becomes plus natural log of 70 after I take the absolute value. And then that would be my final answer for that one. All right, so now down here at the bottom, and kind of finishing this out, I'm going to do one more of these examples, and I'm going to leave the remaining four for you to try on your own and then check with the key. All right, so here in this one, uh, the first one, it looks very complicated. There's exponentials, there's cosines, and so on. But go through the idea of identifying the inside function. So my inside function, I'm going to let u equal 1 minus e to the x. And notice that the derivative of that is going to be negative e to the x dx. So I do need a corrector. But this is a fairly straightforward problem. Even though it looks complicated, it is very pretty straightforward. Just look for the inside function. Uh, the corrector I need is just going to be a negative. So I would add a negative in here and add a negative with that e to the x. So that this portion becomes the du. So this would equal negative integral my du. My, make my u substitution with the cosine. So it becomes cosine of u. I change my bounds, okay, so we'll go ahead and go when x is 0, then u is going to equal 1 minus e to the 0, which is 0, again, and when x is this natural log of 1 plus pi, which again, you may never like, oh, that's a terrible upper bound, but it's there because when I substitute that into the u, 1 minus e, so the natural log of 1 plus pi, remember that the, um, sorry, 1 plus pi, that the e and the log cancel each other out. So this ends up being 1 minus 1 plus pi, which is equal to negative pi. So that would be negative pi. 
And so pretty much, you know, kind of the work for this, even though it, it looks complicated, just kind of follow the process and, and go for the U substitution that you see. It's the only choice you have. If it is a complicated integrand and you are not using a calculator, then the only choice you really have is a U substitution. So that's what you're going to try. Finishing this out, the antiderivative of cosine would be sine, so negative from the corrector. Sine, you evaluated zero to negative pi, which would be negative sine of negative pi minus a negative, so plus sine of zero. And hopefully you'll remember that both sine of negative pi, sine of zero, the y coordinates are zero. So that finishes that out. All right, so I'm going to leave these down here for you to try and then check your answers with my keys.